Good morning everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Marlies, Marley Design, and I am just starting my day with a hot cup of tea. For me it is Monday morning. Our kids just went to school and I have some time to record a video for you guys. But I must say I do not have a whole lot of time today. I can imagine uh, there are more people like me with a small amount of time to create. That means just making something with one technique so you can get a great result in a short amount of time would be a great solution for busy people. Now let me tell you what is in front of me. My Tim holds watercolor pencils set 4, 5 and 6. These are the new sets. I have some wool embossing powder, clear gloss. And the surface that I will work on is the Distress Watercolor cardstock. And I would like to show you a resist technique with these products. To start this technique I have chosen a stamp set to work with. It is called Distress Damask CMS190. And with the stamp set I will use Distress Embossing Ink or the Versamark Watermark Stamp Pad. I placed my stamp platform on my table and on top is my watercolor paper. Now I will place my stamps on the paper in an order that I think is pretty. I will pick up the stamps with the lid of the platform. Now I will ink up my stems with the Distress Embossing Ink and I will repeat this process two times. I immediately removed my paper so I can put on the embossing powder. The embossing powder needs to be heat set, otherwise it will not stick to the paper. And this is how the melted embossing powder looks up close. Let's move on to the coloring part. I have chosen a couple of watercolor pencils, bundled sage, forced moss, gathered twigs and aged mahogany. It does not mean I'm going to use them all. I just made a little palette for myself to see. Um, yeah, and now it's all about playing. First, I will spritz my paper with a little bit of water. And I also sprayed some water on top of my little craft sheet. Okay, so now I added my first layer of color. I will let this dry or you can heat dry it if you want to. After that I will take a look on how to go even further in there. Maybe add an extra layer of color or do some splattering. Let's see. And this is what we created on our first try. I think I will go back in because I want the colors a bit more vibrant. So I will add a second layer of watercolor pencil. My second layer of colors is on and besides using the watercolor pencils I also used a water brush 
and this paintbrush for splattering. Now let's dry this layer so we can see if we need to add any more color. And this is our second layer of color. You can see when you add the watercolor pencils in different kind of layers, so this is my second layer, uh, you can play with the intensity of the colors. So my first step was a light color and I also started with light and then go darker and darker. And now you also have the choice. One, you can leave it as is or you could add a darker color alongside the edges. But when you decide to leave it like it is right now, I already think this is a good resist technique because of course the stamped shapes, the stamped images are very well visible. But my choice will be, I will go back in with a darker color on the edges. And this is how my paper is after adding a darker color on the edges. And I also added a little bit on the inside of the florals. I think this technique is so much fun to do and you will get great and beautiful results. The only thing that I would like to add to this paper is maybe a little bit of a background stamping. Because I think this area is quite clear and I want something to be there just for a little bit of more interest. I will add some background stamping with the stamp set Shattered CMS 466. And I will only stamp partially, so I will not use the whole stamp, but maybe just a corner on this side or a piece of the stamp from this side. The ink that I'm going to use is the Archival Ink Ground Espresso. And why an Archival Ink? Well, because this ink is waterproof after stamping and drying. I am quite, quite happy with the result. Doing this technique also brought me a new idea. So I will show you a second way on using almost the same kind of materials. But yeah, I think with a different result. Again, I will use the Distress Watercolor cardstock from Tim Holtz. I will wet my paper down and I will use the same colors as I did before to create a background. You can see that my colors are still a bit on the light side. I want them more intense. So this next part of the video, you will see me playing around with these watercolor pencils and I will add more and more color. So the colors will be more vibrant.
Yeah, and this is what we have. What did you see me do? I have also dipped my paper into the leftovers of the watercolor pencil, watered down with water. Uh, I thought it was a loss to not use it. And of course, I do like the irregularities in the paper and the stains. Um, yeah, so our basic paper is done for our next technique. Uh, the only thing that we need to do, because next we are going to stamp, um, is to flatten out this paper because you can see, yeah, it is buckled. Uh, so I will put this in a big stack of heavy books and I will be back with you, yeah, in just uh, like 50 minutes or something. My paper is dry and is already on my stamping platform. But this time I'm going to use a different stamp set. I will use the stamp set Worn Text CMS 156. I will put this whole piece of stamp set, so not only the loose letters and numbers, but this whole piece, I will put that on top of my paper. Then I will pick up the stamp with the lid of the platform. And I will ink up my stamp with the Distress Embossing ink. I will do this two times. Right away after stamping I have put my paper onto an A4 printer paper so I can put on the embossing powder. What just happened? I mean, I'm so, so excited for this result. Just wow. So what happened? I made a background with the watercolor pencils in different kind of colors. On top of that, we stamped with the stamp set and the embossing ink. On top of that, we did the clear gloss wool embossing powder. We melted the powder down with our heat gun. And that means that the alphabet now has like a little plastic layer on top that can resist the distress ink that we just added as our last step. The ink that we just used is holding on to the paper in the background but is sitting on top of the embossing powder because like I said it's plastic. What I even could try to do is to remove some extra of the distress ink that is on top of the alphabet to see if I can get those background colors a little bit more up front. I cannot bring it into words how cool I think this is. This is such a surprise. And remember that I only thought about trying this out during our first process with the, um, the ornament stems. And it's not that I am not liking this one anymore, but this one, I mean, this stole my heart. So now we have our two results of this video, two different kind of results, and they are both pretty in their own way. With showing you the results, this video is also coming to an end. I hope you found this was also a very, very nice surprise and that you have learned something from this video, got some inspiration out of it. I hope you enjoyed yourself during this video. I sure did have a good time. So when you like my videos and got some inspiration out of it and you definitely want to try it yourself, please give a like, subscribe or comment down below.
everything is appreciated and it will help me get my videos in a good algorithm. Also in the description box I will put my other links for socials and my coffee shop so you can visit me and see what I create and who I am. Thank you for spending time on my channel and have a great day. Happy crafting everybody! Bye!